Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Wednesday, August 9th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, Second Kings chapter 14 and Second Chronicles 25. Unfortunately, this is going to sound like a broken record. <laughs> we have uh, more, uh, just kind of more brief histories of the kings here, um, where the kings of Judah are, are mostly good, but um, end up having one kind of big falling out at the end, and then the kings of Israel generally being wicked guys. So more of the same today. And so to help us out, there we go. We've got our handy-dandy little, uh, um, little chart here. So we are working with, let's see, today, uh, chapter 14, uh, 2 Kings 14, begins with Amaziah. So right in the middle of Judah there. Um, Amaziah, who becomes king, uh, he does what is right in the eyes of the Lord. He's a good king. Uh, however, uh, the high places were still not removed. So um, this is kind of a common thing that uh, they, they do well. They, they walk in the ways of the Lord, but they're still not taking down all the high places. They're not completely trying to... Um, get all that pagan worship out of the land. So as soon as he took power, uh, we're told that he killed all the servants that had plotted against his father and killed him. So um, he does kind of clean house a little bit. But uh, both uh, the the Second Kings text and the uh, Second Chronicles text points out that according to the law of Moses, he did not then put their children to death. You know, he held accountable those who, who plotted and killed his father, but he did not... Um, extend that punishment to his children. Um, so we do get a sense that he was walking in the ways of the Lord, so that's good. Um, we get a little bit about um, how at some point he, he goes up against the, um, let's see, who is it? Jehoash, Jehoash, yes, of Israel. Um, and uh, kind of calls him out, and they come together and they fight. And uh, Judah was defeated. And Jehoash captured Amaziah, um, broke that came into Jerusalem, broke down part of the wall of Jerusalem, and then plundered the the house of the Lord, plundered the king's house, and took a lot of stuff and and and, and hostages away with him. Um, and so, yeah, not not a great end. And then then there's a little bit about um, some people who conspired against um, Amaziah to kill him. There was a conspiracy to kill him, and that's how he died. And with the with that king's text, we don't really get why. You know what? What was the deal with that? Why was there a conspiracy? I mean, okay, he lost a battle and he was captured, but I mean, come on. So for that, we um, we'll get that in twenty five, and then the end of chapter fourteen there is uh, talking about Israel with uh, Dro uh, Jeroboam the second. Um, he takes over. Um, he did evil in the sight of the Lord, just like all the others. Uh, however, we do get the uh, point made in the text that God. Um, considered the affliction of the people. You know, he did look down at Israel and, and their leaders, and, you know, he, under, he saw that they were doing evil, and this was not good, but also in that saw how they were afflicted. And so he did have some mercy on them. You know, he didn't bring swift judgment upon them. He, you know, the Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. So he is, he's promised to, to, not blot out the name of his people from, from the land. So he is being patient. Um, he is not um, moving quickly to, uh, to bring punishment or judgment upon them. So we do get that little tag at the end there. So now jumping to Second Chronicles chapter 25, um, this is where we get a little bit of the reason why there was a conspiracy to kill Amaziah. Okay, And that was um, after Amaziah had struck down the Edomites, Okay, and which was like, wow, okay, great. You went in there, you struck them down, cool. He took the the gods, the, the pagan idols from that place, took them and then set them up in Judah for people to worship them. And it's like, uh, okay, now now we see the turn here, right? Um, so for, for a guy who did 
right in the eyes of the Lord and you know, walked in the laws of Moses for f- some foolish reason, he brings in these pagan gods so that people can worship them. Um, now, possibly was it he that he turned from God or was it him just, you know, there were still people worshiping like in the high places in Judah. So was there a, a, a desire from the part of the people? You know, we, we want to worship these whatever gods we want. And he was just placating them. You know, either way, it's not a good look. Um, and the, so God sent a prophet to confront uh, Amaziah, but Amaziah wouldn't listen. Um, and then, uh, after all that, then comes a confrontation with uh, Joah- Jehoash of Israel. And then we see probably why Amaziah was given over to uh, Jehoash in defeat, is that he had rejected God by bringing in these false idols for people to worship. So we kind of see the beginning of the end going down there for, for him. And then it closes with the conspiracy uh, to put him to death um, after he had turned away from, from Yahweh. So once the people saw that Amaziah brought in these false gods, they, they turned against him. Um, so, uh, you know, it's like I said, it, it's, it's more of the, of the same kind of that we've, we've had so far. Um, you know, if, Many of the lessons or, you know, moral of the story kind of things that we've had the last few days, a week or so, uh, applies here as well. Um, Now, of course, I I would not advocate, you know, (laughs) rising up and putting to death those who, who, uh, um, you know, are are following God and then turn away. (laughs) Let's let's not do that. But um, what we can see here is that there, there is something to the to the boldness and willingness to confront those, um, especially those, you know, in, in positions of authority um, who turn away from God. Um, now, s- hear me, <laughs> definitely not the way they did it back then, but uh, certainly um, standing up for what is right and true and uh, not not allowing, um, you know, a, per- position, a person's status or position to... Um, to keep you from speaking the truth, you know, kind of this is all str- speaking the truth to power kind of thing where, um, you know, we, we stand for the word of God, no matter, no matter who it is that we're, we're uh, confronting. Um, now, certainly when we're sharing the word of God with others and we, we want people to hear the gospel and be saved, you know, we're, we're not going to do it in a confrontational manner or we're, we're going to do it tactfully and lovingly and, and with great care. Uh, but then there are always times when, when, um, when there's, you know, it's kind of the, the Luther's here I stand moment. It's like, no, it, we, we, we have to, we can't back down from standing for the truth and for what God says. So, you know, there, there's a little bit of that in there too. But, uh, again, like I said, not to the extreme level that, uh, the, the conspirators did with, uh, Amaziah, but, um, yeah, I think <laughs> I'll just be quiet now, <laughs> but, uh, that's a lot of, um, a lot of the same stuff today, um, but hopefully that, well, here, hopefully this um, helps a little bit that, uh, you know, it gives you a little bit of a, a guide for, for what's going on and who's who's coming after whom. And um, yeah, so hope it helps. Let me let me know in the, in the comments. All right. Well, I think that's about it for today. So let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, blessings to you on this Wednesday, halfway point of the week. Hope everything goes well for you today, and uh, just have a great day. So until tomorrow. Peace be with you.